Okay, so we're going to learn Photoshop in this video. Um, I'm going to take you all the way through uh, learning of uh, DSLR cameras and why they're so significant for Photoshop uh, image manipulation, all the way to uh, finishing out with uh, how to build a uh, successful composition uh, for a movie poster uh, based off of uh, multiple dimensions and sizes. So right now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take them top and I'm going to talk about uh, the use of DSLR cameras and uh, why they're so important for uh, for Photoshop uh, image manipulation. So I'll go into File Open here and when I go in there I'm just going to go ahead and track down a uh, folder I have saved on my desktop here and uh, I'm going to go into what's called uh, the Photoshop folder that I have saved and I have uh, another folder that's called uh, DSLR Wood. So I'm just going to open up this image here and you're noticing that this was shot uh, using my uh, my Canon uh, 5D Mark II camera. Uh, this is uh, complete uh, raw footage. Um, when you're opening these things up in Photoshop, it already gives you some uh, image manipulation properties. You can uh, adjust like contrast shadows and such. But we can do all this also in uh, Photoshop. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Open Image now. And this is going to come over and it's going to pop into Photoshop. And I'm going to use this uh, footage that I shot raw with my DSLR camera to build my movie poster in Photoshop. Um, before I do that, I just want to, uh, real quick, show you the importance of having a DSLR camera to shoot your own footage for uh, image manipulation in Photoshop. So if I go up top image and I go to what's called image size. You're noticing right now this uh, little submenu pops up and it's got inches set up and it's 12.48 uh, by 18.72. Uh, I'm going to switch this to pixels. And then as soon as I, I do that, check out the, uh, the width and height now. Now it's 3,744 by 5,616. And we are talking about 300 resolutions, which is, which is exactly what we want. I want to talk about that here in a second when I get to the uh, building of the movie poster. Um, these pixels this uh, aspect ratio here is is so wonderful to have especially for uh, Photoshop use because these pixels right here you, you in Photoshop it, it's wise to be able to have the maximum uh, size possible for imagery where when we scale it uh, we want to only be able to scale down we don't ever ever want to be able to uh, scale this image larger because if we scale images larger in Photoshop they break up Okay, so I'm just going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is uh, show you uh, um, so, well, the similar image that was captured using my smartphone. So in, in conjunction using DSLR cameras, if you uh, do not have a digital camera, you can use your uh, camera on your smartphone. So I'm going to go to File Open, open up the same uh, area of location. Uh, the, the image is just a little bit different, but it was shot using my smartphone. All right, so this image pops up. Um, this is it. This was shot on my smartphone. This is shot using my Windows phone. I'm going to go to image and image size and I'm going to take a look here. Now these pixels again are a little bit smaller but they are 2000 by 3552. Resolution is uh, 72. So keep in mind when we're shooting with our smartphone uh, we're going to be shooting in 72 res where in the uh, DSR cameras you're always going to be shooting around 300 res. And 300 res is what we want to work with when we, uh, we're doing our, uh, our, our Photoshop image editing because your 300 resolution gives you the, the full quality for print. Okay, so I'm going to click OK here, go back, and I'm just switching between these two tabs that I have opened up here in Photoshop. So I'm going back to my smartphone. Um, notice the image quality. It's still very, very good. I mean, it's amazing that smartphones have these capabilities now. Uh, uh, in our digital age and they're able to shoot this kind of quality material. Alright, so now I'm going to go to File Open and I'm going to go and locate this image that I found of this uh, hiker which I'm going to make like a, a scary movie movie poster here in a second. I'm just going to click Open on this person in the woods that I have saved. And when this comes into Photoshop, you notice the size. So it looks like it's, uh, it, it's already encompassing the idea of uh, the same pixel and aspect ratio of these first two images I showed you here, the one shot with the smartphone and the one shot with my DSLR camera. But let's go to image and image size 
And we're noticing that the pixels for this image is 1200 by 16. Keep in mind, and then it's also 72 res. Keep in mind that I, I, I downloaded this image from the internet. So what, what's the disadvantage about using images from the internet um, is, is the fact that anything that's been uploaded to the you know, internet has been compressed. Okay, it's been compressed from its actual uh, original size, its, its resolution, and its quality. And it's also been converted to uh, 72 res. So you're kind of limited when you grab imagery from the uh, internet. And it's more wise to use uh, digital capturing devices like DSLR cameras, your smartphones and such. So in this uh, little lesson here, I'm just kind of showing you the, uh, the difference and, uh, you know, but, but how we can still get around this, okay, uh, if, you, uh, if you have to use imagery that is uh, downloaded from the Internet. So I found this, uh, this character by, uh, by using the Internet. And uh, let me go on into uh, Google Chrome here. Now, a couple of websites you can uh, take advantage of uh, if, uh, you know, searching for imagery, but you also have to pay for copyright, is uh, Flickr. And Flickr is a photo sharing website. You can get on here. Um, these are all uh, images that are captured by uh, professional photographers, and uh, you know a good majority of them are that do that for a living. And they upload their imagery into this website, which is uh, really great because if you do uh, find an image that's that's going to be pretty good res, you can download it from here and utilize it for your uh, your, your your Photoshop projects. Another one that's uh, really really good and uh, used very often is uh, Futolia. And this is another really great uh, website. This is actually, in my opinion, a little bit better than Flickr. But um, you could get on here and you could go to search engine and you could find some uh, really, really great uh, high-res images on here to uh, use for your uh, Photoshop manipulations. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you now uh, the the challenge it is to find images using like the Google search engine. So I'm going to find uh, an image about uh, just just uh, hiking in the woods, which I, I believe is what I've already searched for on Google. I'm going to go immediately go to images, and we're just going to look through all these. Now all these at first glance look like they're high res, but when I scroll over these images, notice the aspect ratio. So this one's 510 by 339 okay and if I click on it it gives me this uh, more of a, a, a bigger image which is only the uh, just the demo but then I'm going to view image and this is the actual size of what I'm downloading again this was an image captured by a digital camera but was uploaded to the internet so it's lost some of its quality and especially its resolution and size let's um, let's just go ahead and uh, right click and save this image so you have an understanding of what 510 339 looks like in comparison to uh, the DSLR shot that I took. So this DSLR shot going back to the original one in Photoshop, go image image size, is three, you know, 3,744 by 5,616. Let's open up this other one now. Family hiking in the woods. Image, image size, 510 by 339, 72 res. Now, I'm going to take this image, and let's say, you know, it looks like they're the same. It looks like it can be used inside this DSLR camera. But let's go ahead and bring it over. So the way you do that in Photoshop is I'm going to take this layer with the selectional tool activated, okay? Hotkey is V. I'm going to click and drag and drop this into this image and look at, look at the, uh, the size. This shows that I really cannot use this image <laughs> um, <laughs> for photo manipulation and uh, bringing it over if I wanted to put these family, you know, this family in this trail <laughs> for this because uh, its its resolution is too small. Look at the the pixel comparison; it's just not going to work. Uh, the reason why is you cannot scale an image larger; it it just breaks it up more. If I was to take this image and go to Edit, Transform, Scale. And I would hold shift on my keyboard and then click and drag the corner to create uniform scale. And then I would immediately just click and drag the middle to bring it over. And then 
what I would do is click this selectional tool again and then click apply and you can see it does scale it but it also breaks it up we don't notice it now but I'm going to use the zoom tool I'm going to click on the zoom tool right here and Z is the hotkey let's go to click in a few times and you can see how see the pixelation across this uh, these contour lines of this backpack this man is carrying uh, if I hold spacebar I can kind of pan around and we can take a look at it more yeah it's this this and this entire image due to the uh, unlike scale and resolution between the uh, the DSLR picture and then this uh, one that's only like 500 by 300 pixels uh, you can see how uh, it's just not going to work I'm going to uh, immediately uh, I got the zoom uh, magnifying glass activated. If I uh, ha hold Alt while this is activated, it goes to minus, and I'll left click, and then I can zoom back out. Okay, I'm going to take this now with the selectional tool. I'm just going to take this layer, click and drag and drop it over my little trash can down here, and we're going to trash it because we know we can't use it. So here's an image I did find on the internet, and that that kind of gives you a nice breakdown of uh, how to locate and find images that are going to be successful. So I'm going to uh, use this image for uh, my uh, movie poster I'm about to build out here in a second. And uh, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to take this image. I'm going to take this uh, this tab and just bring it and have it float. And then again, this is the image I captured on my DSLR camera. And I'm just going to take this and click and drag this layer and drop it in here. And notice that I'm going to close this out now. Notice that this layer comes in. If I was to place this character where I want him to be placed, though, uh, this this image is not very very large. But his scale and size, without having to scale the image too large, is going to fit perfect for what I want to do. So there is an advantage to pulling images from the internet, but it's all about what you need to get the job done. So I, you know, his scale. In reference to this road where I want to position him like right about there and then I'm gonna put this haunted house back here in this area with some really dark casting light rays coming at you um, but this is gonna work in, to my advantage but keep in mind the main image which is the background or the whole scenic development that you want it's wise to try to use a digital capturing device if you still cannot use any kind of digital capturing device the best solution to use is in, when you find a, uh, a good successful title to work with like if you're across those other websites like Flickr and Fotolia um, in, in conjunction to type in, in the phrase hiking in the woods or let's just say woods I would immediately type in 3000 space X 4000 and that right there Google knows to look for that aspect ratio. And then I'm going to click the search. And now if I hover the, over these images, look at this. It actually tracked down images that are 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. Or close to it. These are uh, images that I can definitely uh, definitely use. You know, this, this image here. What, is it the shot I'm looking for? Is it the colors I'm looking for? Is is it the angle that I'm looking for? I don't know. May I, I you know maybe it is, maybe it's not. But at least I have the ability to to track down a few using that concept, which is really good. And then again, I would go to view image after I click on it, and then there it is. Look at the maximum scale of it. Right click and save as, and then I'd save it in. So I'll just name this tree, and then I could come over. I'm going to go back into Photoshop now, and let's uh, let's just delete this layer. And let me go to File Open. And there you go. And now you can see that yes, it's very possible that I could use this image with this layer. So in this section, we're going to talk about movie poster sizes. So I'm going to go to File Open. I'm going to open this image that has all the movie poster sizes. 
and at first glance we're noticing that the largest movie poster size is 24 by 36. Uh, keep in mind this is a great size to uh, utilize for movie posters but we do have a few challenges that we're going to run into with the size. The next size down is 18 by 24. The uh, uh, smallest is 11 by 17. Okay, and then the uh, small size, of course, is eight and a half by eleven. Um, this is the uh, the small size that uh, you're, you're definitely required to use. If you want to bounce up further, you're welcome to. But you're going to run into more challenges as you get more into these uh, larger sizes. And I'm going to kind of break that down in this uh, section. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep this open. I'm going to file open, and I'm going to open up the uh, DSLR camera shot that I captured and click open. Okay, and here it is. And now what I'm going to do is if I was to start building my movie poster, I want to go to File New. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch pixels to inches. And I'm going to type in the size that I want. So let's say I want to build the 24 by 36. So again, File New, Inches. I'm going to go 24 by 36. And my resolution is going to be 300. And I want to switch my RGB to CMYK for print. Okay, but also what I want to do here is I want to add 0.125 to both of these values. Because these are the bleeds for our movie poster. The bleed that we must have that eighth of an inch addition added on. So when we do outsource it, meaning a print company for outsourcing, it's sent out to the printers and they have that extra bleed for cropping and uh, printing correct uh, modifications. So I'm going to click OK. And here it is. So I'm going to take this DSLR camera that I shot, uh, this, this picture, and I'm going to go to Image, Image Size, and again it's 37 by four, uh, 3744 by 56.16. I'm going to take it. Now watch this into the maximum movie poster size possible. Wow. So it comes in and I've got some challenges here. It's not wise to scale an image larger, but because this is shot at 300, I can kind of break the barrier a little bit. So I'm going to scale it a little bit larger and go to Edit, Transform, Scale. And I will hold Shift and drag this corner. I'd say I could get it maybe right about here. Again, this is the image I shot using my DSLR camera. And then I could use this image to use some Photoshop tricks to build it out along the edges and maybe build some other area down here. So keep that in mind. I'm going to take this layer now, click and drag and drop it in the trash can. Let's say the smartphone. File open. I'm going to go into the smartphone shot, which is the similar shot to the DSLR camera and I'm going to bring this in. Okay now what happened here? This image shot on your digital capturing devices image, image size, is shot at 72 res. You really don't want to be using 72 res but if you have to I understand and the reason why is look at this. Look at the disadvantage. It's even smaller because it's not 300 dpi. Okay so they really want to work for this uh, this movie poster size. Really anything shot DSLR camera or anything that's going to be found on the internet where you can find an image size that's close to this range, you're going to be good. Okay, so let's do the next image size down. Let's check out the 18 by 24. eighteen point one two five by 24 0.125 resolution 300 for print RGB to CMYK for print click OK OK so let's go back and let's open up our DSR shot and this is the 18 by 24 I'm going to take this, click and drag and drop in here. Okay, so it comes in. It works to our advantage. I could break the barrier just a little bit. I'm 
let's say about that size. And now I don't have so much to uh, try to modify and filling in these areas using Photoshop tricks, okay? All right, let's see the, uh, the, the smart camera now. Let me close this back out. <clears throat> okay, smart camera, the smartphone camera. I'm going to click and drag and drop it in. Okay, so it's a little bit bigger. It's, it's still not very user-friendly for this, so keep that in mind. So now let's go ahead and let's say I want to use the uh, 11 by 17. Keep in mind that two 8.5 by 11s placed next to each other creates 11 by 17. Uh, this size is what uh, uh, any companies that print internally, they don't outsource because of these larger sizes to companies that specialize only in print. Most companies in the digital age that we live in they have these uh, size specifications uh, because this is the largest size that they print. Uh, being that 8.5 by 11 and 8.5 by 11 placed right next to each other is the uh, 11 by 17 spread. It's like two pages of a magazine that's opened up. So keep in mind, that's why this is the largest size most companies will print internally. So let's look at that one. File new. Inches. 11.125. By 17.125. Resolution 300. RGB, CMYK. Okay. So now let's look at the DSLR uh, shot I took using my DSLR camera. I'm going to click, drag, and drop this into this image. And wow, it fits perfectly. I don't have to scale. I don't have to do any Photoshop tricks. And again, this is the 11 by 17 shooting with a DSLR camera shot. All right, let me delete this layer. Now let's look at the uh, image I shot with uh, the smart camera, the smartphone camera. Click, drag, and Bring this down and float it. Take this layer, drop and drag and place it in here. Okay, so we uh, we can still use this for 11 by 17. So we've, we, we might have to scale it a little bit. So if I put it in the corner, go edit, transform, scale, and I hold shift and drag this corner, I can maybe get it to right about here. And then we can use some Photoshop editing tricks to uh, get around this. So I've decided to go with the 24 by 36 because I have the provided DSLR shot that uh, will help me with the uh, build out of this composition. Keep in mind that uh, you can do the 11 by 17 um, if you do lack any kind of digital capturing devices that would uh, prevent you from doing the larger scales. So it's entirely okay, if it's, but it, remember, it's your choice depending on what your hardware setup is. Um, if you have the 11 by 17, um, remember to put it in 300 res as we've talked about in this video. But what I, what I would like to show you is it, it's still very possible to track images down online. Here I found this one uh, image of uh, just by doing a Google search engine of uh, woods. Now, in the Google search, uh, I just typed the standard name Woods. Remember, you can also type in the, the uh, number value I talked about, which is a 3,000 by 4,000, and that will help you track down more high-res images, okay, using all the websites I've, I've provided you, the uh, in addition to Flickr and uh, Fotolia. But here I, I looked down, I found this image, and, and I went ahead and saved it, okay, and if you notice, this image is... 3900 by 2613, which isn't bad. So if I go back into Photoshop and I open up that image, this is 11 by 17. Okay. Again, this is 11 by 17. So I'm going to take this image, I'm going to drop it in. And yeah, we can scale a little bit larger. We can use it, and we can use some Photoshop tricks 
to finish building out the rest of the composition without having to break up the image so much to where it pixelates. Okay? So I'm going to use the uh, resolution I want to use, which is the 24 by 36. And go to File, Open. The DSLR image that I want. scale it a little bit just a little bit again it's not wise to do this but you can get away with it just a little bit and I'm going to use this image to finish building out the rest of the uh, the composition keep in mind that you can uh, go to my LinkedIn page at linkedin.com if you would like to uh, link up with me and uh, have me as a uh, resource and a reference in your uh, list of contacts, you can uh, send me a message at my LinkedIn and uh, that will reach out to my Yahoo email, uh, hence my uh, Gmail accounts, and uh, I can always be there to help you. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, look forward to working with you.